Now then, here we are for another F1 Manager Career Mode episode. Now, straight away, we're going to just address the obvious. My voice is better now, but I'm blocked up. You know, I'm ill, I've been struggling for two weeks, and it's not going anywhere. But either way, we're going to push on and push through it because I want to try and get this content out for you guys. And I'm actually really enjoying this as well, so I really want to get into it and keep pushing on. So here we are for round three at Albert Park. And of course, if you guys haven't seen the previous episode, Jeddah, round two, go check it out, link in the top right. A lot of stuff happened in that episode, guys. We had the first ever race end under a safety car. Also, big investments made into facilities as well, both in terms of you know the improvements of the upgrades and also for the staff facilities as well. So lots of improvements being made. And of course, at the end of episode one in Bahrain, we've done quite a few upgrades. So a lot is happening right now, and we're also scouting staff. So this thing's moving, and I'm hoping by the second half of the season, we've got a decent package and a decent format to try and you know, push the team forward a little bit into next year. So with that said, and that kind of waffle aside, we're going to get to the weekend. Now, one thing I want to mention is in three days time, we might be voting on next season's regulations. I'm not sure if you can see this because of my webcam, but if not, this is what it says here. Three days time, uh, new regulations vote. So that could be a key thing. We'll, we'll address that at the end of this episode. For now, though, let's get into it. We've got emails to take care of. So as you can see, we've got a preview of this one, of course, racing at the updated Albert Park layout. Um, nothing really too important in the, in the preview. We're going to get into race prep and get things ready. So let's have a look at the targets. Um, I feel like we might be worth having a look at these this weekend. So incentive, $90,000 if we get Q2 with at least one driver. Whereas if we do a guarantee, then we're looking at 1.8 mil. So I think we're going to send a guarantee for this one to try something different. We're going to guarantee... qualifying position we're not going to reach q3 but we'll go for this there's a loss of 22k that could possibly happen but you know what he who dares wins as a great man once said as for the race targets i'm also gonna go for it we're gonna go for the fast lap and we'll go for a glory run on the soft heart in the race and see if we can achieve that goal having said that quite a big hit to be fair 54 grand that's a big whack so we are gambling here but you know what let's Let's heat things up a little bit and make it a bit more spicy. I saw the feedback from you guys in the previous episode. Um, some of you said that the deploy mode might not be the best option for a hot lap in qualifying. So I've bet that in mind and we'll see how that affects qualifying here today. But yeah, job done. We can now go into the race weekend. Welcome to Melbourne for a weekend of fierce competition. We're a stone's throw from the beach here at the Albert Park Circuit. It might be party mood in the grandstands, but in the paddock, expectations and tensions are high. The Albert Park Circuit is bursting with rapid corners and a long straight where drivers can push their speed to the limits. Good attention to medium speed downforce will likely make beating this beast of a track just a little bit easier. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs and nothing is certain at this stage. Okay then, let's get to it. Now you even heard Crofty say there, this is a medium speed circuit, medium downfalls, which is one of our biggest weaknesses along with a high speed. So of course we're going to address that soon. We should have a front wing upgrade on for the next race after this, which is going to help us out. And then for the race after that, we should have the new underfloor. So things are arriving. For now though, we're going to jump into FP1 and get into it. So let's waste no time. Both cars are ready to go, and hopefully we can get a decent weekend on the way. Both drivers are 89% car, part knowledge. We're going to try and get that track acclimatization up, and of course get the setup confidence absolutely spot on, because we made some changes for Stroll in qualifying in Jeddah, and it backfired. So I want to make sure we get it dialed in in practice this time, and get it absolutely perfect. Right, let's do it again. So we know what we're looking for. Let's go for a rough estimate and send both drivers out with decent setups, and see where we go. There we go, Sebastian Vettel out on track stroll just up the road as you can see here at the pit exit i'm feeling positive man like, i'm feeling good vibes about this one you know i thought jeddah had potential um i think i may have messed up qualifying which wasn't great so i'm going to make sure to not make that mistake again but yeah this is going to be fun man we've got both drivers on a 12 lap run on the soft which is pretty long but hopefully it gives us decent knowledge 
and I'm going to try to be more efficient with my runs. So we're going to go for two runs per FP session. So we'll go for two runs in FP1 and two runs in FP2. Uh, I'm thinking soft, soft, medium, soft in that order. So we'll see how it goes. We're going to let these guys crack away and we'll basically adjust the setup as of when we need it. And hopefully we'll have something decent at the end of it. So I'll be back with updates soon. I'm going to try and trim down the episodes a little bit so it's not as long and we kind of get to the point of the episode a bit quicker. So let's let the drivers do their thing and hopefully at the end of it we have a decent car Ooh, crash several involved let's have a look at this we might get a replay on screen but that might put an end to our run plan rear wing has minor damage multiple cars i think let's have a look let's We're see what this is watching the red bull oh dear so seb involved perez oh god contact there oh there's chaos on the track my god Perez mate what have you done all right so there's Seb no visible damage but rear wing clearly with issues um car in the wall yeah copy let's have a look so tire wear on the rears pretty bad rear tire wear actually compared to the front rear wing minor damage suspension minor damage Okay. We'll keep them out and hope he can finish the run anyway. Clearly the crash has taken something out of Seb's tyres because uh, Lance has got perfectly fine tyres. I was panicking there for a second. I thought we had really bad rear tyre wear, but it's okay on Lance's car. It's just the crash with Seb obviously has ruined those tyres. So I'm actually instead going to bring Seb in and fix his car. We'll leave Lance out there for the data. Uh, so of course they both have the same car now. You know, Lance has the, damp the upgrade this weekend for the um the suspension so we will bring seb in seeing as he's struggling and confirm the box there we go so seb into the garage we will let stroll crack on as we look to fix seb's car right so we've brought stroll back or more like he brought himself back as i don't think he was able to finish to run the soft tires didn't last that long as you can see here in the bottom right just my webcam covering this i think but it says tire issue you need to use a tire compound with at least 12 laps left of use, which in other words means we need to use a compound that can actually do 12 laps. Now the sub's actually pretty decent to be fair, um, in terms of what I first guessed it, but he's not happy with the oversteer or the cornering, even though we're looking pretty decent. So we'll, we'll, we'll make some adjustments and see if Lance is happy with it. Um, we'll try and fine tune it a bit. Right, we're going to send Lance out. The reason for that is because we're going to use up a set of hard tyres, which I kind of forgot about really, but we're going to put him on a 30 lap run. In other words, all the way until the end of the session. We'll bring him in with about two minutes to go and see the feedback and look at the setup and make the adjustments necessary. So yeah, Lance is going to be on a long, long run now until the end of the session, so we don't have to worry about him. Wait for Seb to reconfigure with the repairs and we'll send him out on a set of mediums. And then what we'll do is we'll do Seb's hard tie run in FP2. So that's the plan. Hopefully no interruptions and we can just keep chipping away. Okay, so we have Lance on track getting stuck in with an Alpine and a Mercedes. Meanwhile, we've got Seb now finally rejoining the circuit on a set of mediums on a 25 lap run. We'll call both drivers in at the end with about two, three minutes to go. And we'll go over the data and make the changes for the next session. As you can see here on Seb's side, Minor suspension damage, not much we can do about that. I tried to fix it, but it wasn't possible. So FP2 will be the session for Seb where we try to look at that. Uh, driving clean air for both drivers. That's going to be a pretty clear instruction. So yeah, we'll let's have them crack on and uh, let's see what happens at the end of the session. How does it feel? Uh, just have no confidence right now. Copy that. Okay, not ideal. We let Lance get all five of the bars and he's not free and confident with the setup. At least now we know the adjustments we have to make. We'll let Lance finish his run anyway. Um, you know, just to see how he feels on the, on the old tyres. We'll bring him in a little bit earlier though. As for Seb, you can see him getting stuck in here with an Alfa Romeo doing his own thing. Wait to see what the setup report is from Seb. I think we should have enough time to see this through, so let's wait and see what happens. Very close to achieving the five bars. It's close for time, but I'd love to get this feedback from him. So hopefully it arrives. Let's speed up by two times and let's see if we get the information. You can see here's Lance making his way back to the garage. Also battling with an Alfa Romeo. Seems to be the trend of the day. Both drivers scrapping with the Alphas. 
But yeah, strolling out to the garage. So we'll let Seb see out the rest of this run. Hopefully we get the information. I really want this last self-confidence bar to come through. So we get the, the, the information that we need. In the meantime, while that happens, we're going to work on stroll here and make the adjustments. Okay, this should be better. You can see the green values is what it was before. So besides braking stability, uh, traction, bit of a risk as Lance was happy with that. It was great, but I feel like, you know, I want to try and dial in the rest of the setup here a little bit more if I can. So uh, we'll, we'll take a bit of a hit and see if it pays off. I think this will be pretty decent balance for him. More or less centered all around. What's your thoughts, Sebastian, on coming in or doing any more? Cover's good. Copy. Nice. So Seb's happy. We will bring him in. We've got Lance on the adjustments already. We should have just about enough time to bring Seb in here and work on the car before the session ends. There we go. Seb into the garage. 30 seconds to go, so this is going to work out just about perfectly time-wise. We're already configuring Stroll's new setup for the car. So we'll go ahead and work on Seb now really quickly based off the feedback that he gave us. 62%, not great, but we can definitely work on that. Right, FP1 finished. Signs setting the pace, 120.4. Lance P16, Seb P17, Perez out of the session and also a grid penalty by the way, as you can see here in the top right, so not a good session for Checo. As for us, not too shabby, but it seems like we are a bit off the pace around here. This doesn't seem to suit our car, but we'll keep tripping away, we'll keep working FP2, try and get that set up absolutely spot on. Okay, so FP2 has finished Verstappen fastest with a 120.5. Grid penalty, of course, for Perez, as we know, and also Yuki Sonoda now has one. Seb finishes in P17, Lance in P18. To be fair, Seb only just over a tenth behind Mick Schumacher, so good improvement. I do wonder if Seb's FP1 lap, of course, was a bit slower due to the suspension damage, but it seems like we're a bit closer in FP2. We've done some good work. Seb looks good, so uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Either way, it's looking decent. Let's have a look at the uh, extra information. So, Seb confidence, 62% for Seb. Lance, unknown, not really ideal. Uh, track acclimatization at 45 and 60% respectively. Um, I might take care of FP3 just to be sure we get what we need. I'll see. Hello and thank you for joining us as our race weekend unfolds. Free practice is nearly done and that means that qualifying awaits. Each team will be looking to build on the progress they made during yesterday's practice sessions. When it comes to preparation, absolutely nothing should be left to chance. Everything has to be just right. Of course, by the time the cars hit the track, well, there are some things in Formula One that no one can prepare for. You're going to want to join us for this, folks, so fasten your seatbelts. Balance check, Lance. Yeah. Not bad. I think it's okay. Okay, that's better. So Lance is happier Coffee. with the setup. We'll keep them out there. We want to try and bring up the track acclimatization. So it's 47% for Seb, 62 for Lance. Let's try and bring that up a little bit. Gearbox showing a bit of wear. That's on Seb's side. Not ideal. As you can see, 39% gearbox. Um, we'll do avoid curbs for Seb. We'll do the same for Lance. How's Lance looking? 64% gearbox. Much better for Lance Stroll. I wonder if, of course, that crash hurt Seb's gearbox as he got hit in the rear by Perez. Hmm. Not ideal. Anyway, let's keep them out there. Let's try and finish these runs. Yeah, it's just a little bit real limited. Good information. Copy that. How many laps am I going to get on these? Not many. Strapping in the tyres. Okay. Copy. Is it working what we're doing? Just hold on fellas, hold on. Not long to go now. Okay, so five seconds to go. The session is pretty much over. I just want to see what the feedback is in regards to the setup. Hmm. I'm going to trust this setup. I'm going to trust it and hope it works. 
Lance is happier now as well, which is good. Right, FP3 finished then, so Verstappen fastest, 120.5 on a hard tyre. We finished P17 with Lance, P19 with Seb. Bit off the pace compared to FP2. I'm going to look at changing Seb's gearbox for qualifying. Right, so with Seb, we're going to go ahead and change the gearbox. We will take a spare. There shouldn't be a penalty for that, as we're allowed to use any of these four before we start taking penalties. So there we go, we're ready to go. Both cars good to go. Let's commit to qualifying. We will put the drivers on auto. So let's go, soft tyre. Run plan, one flying lap. Include cool down lap, yep. We might go, should we go for two? Let's go for two front laps, why not? May as well. Same for Lance, soft heart. Two flying laps. And there we go. Right. Let's get him out of the way. It's no time. Track rubber low, but the grip is normal. So we'll leave them in automatic mode, unlike the last race. So we'll see how they perform. First laps coming in. Lance Stroll. As you can see there, Seb as well. Seb, four tenths off Lance. Definitely seems like we've got the pace of Lance this weekend. Might have to give Lance priority if uh, Seb then pick up his game. Go for a second push. We'll see how that second push lap goes. I don't know if it's consecutive or a cool down then a second push. Across the line. No improvement there, so that must have been a second cool down. Will we get another push? There we go. Seb does improve. Lance as well, a little bit. Right, bring them back in. And we'll make some more changes. We'll go for single lap runs now. Okay, both drivers are out there. We've sent Seb out first this time. He's ahead of Lance, about to start their laps. So we'll keep an eye on the timing board as we will see the splits. So first sector for Seb is not an improvement. What about Lance? He does improve. Sector two, Seb personal best, so is Lance. And now the final sector to end the lap. At the bottom five for Sebastian Vettel. Yes. And Stroll as well, but that's a big lap from Seb. He found a load of time on that one. Both cars out of the bottom five. That's encouraging. Ahead of both Williams as well. We'll bring them in and send them out for a final run. We've got enough time, so we'll burn up our last set of tyres and give it everything to try and get one car into Q2. With that guarantee, of course, on the line. It does seem like that gearbox has given Seb a bit of performance back. Although his first run wasn't great, it seems to be on pace. So... Right now, we've got Seb in P15, Stroll P16, of course, Verstappen and Leclerc will improve, which will mean that it'll be both Williams and both Aston Martins out. We're only two tenths away from Mick. Hamilton will improve as well, and there's a big gap to Magnussen. So I think we're going to get knocked out, but it's a question of can we maybe snag and split the Haas cars? That would be nice. You never know, something could happen to Leclerc and Verstappen as well, but I'm not really expecting it to happen. Anyway, let's um, get ready to send them out. Okay, cars are leaving the pits. We've done this in Bahrain. We're going to try and put them out last on track in clean air. So let's try and time this. Two minutes to go. And we can send them out now. So we'll go with Lance first on this run. And then Seb. Right, this is it. Final runs. Let's watch these from onboard and enjoy them. We'll go with Lance, seeing as he's definitely improved and stepped up this weekend. So... Let's set up the run here as we go with the onboard view. Right, come on, Lance. Let's see what you can do, mate. Let's get the timings up. Already at the bottom of the screen, you can see track grip has gone up to high now. So we're going to get the best track conditions here. Here we go. Can we get a car into Q2? Unlikely, but let's hope. This is a track that doesn't really suit our car. Medium speed circuit. But I think we've definitely improved here this weekend with the setup. So far, so good. Down to turn three for Lance. Gets the apex nice. Through turn four as well, gets the apex. And now into the first sector split. Let's see what this is. Is it going to be a personal best? Yes, it is. What about Seb? Is he going to also set a personal best? No, he doesn't. That's two runs in a row where Seb hasn't set a personal best in the first sector. So his, his best first sector was in his very first lap. Let's see if Lance here can push on. Making a wait into the end of set for two now. We've got both Haas cars as the next two cars up the road. Lance doesn't improve the second sector. Does Seb improve? Yes, he does. 
so history repeating itself. I think Mick Schumacher might have a penalty, or maybe he's on the risk of elimination. That's what that icon means there, possibly. Let's see, though. Here comes Lance making his way through the final few corners now. Do we have an answer? Let's see. Mick Schumacher improves. Massive lap. Finds four tenths. Magnussen up to 12th. Big improvements from the Haas cars under pressure. Lance across the line. Doesn't improve by much. Only 200th. Sebastian Vettel. Does he improve by much? No, he doesn't. Qualifying over. And we miss out and we fail a guarantee. All right, there we have it then. So Verstappen fastest, 18.7. Snow P15, Schumacher out, but the gap at the end was six tenths, which is a bit of a shame. To be fair, Stroll only just beat Albon, so it was pretty damn close. Look at the laps, so 10 laps for us, five for everyone else. We gave it a good shot, and in the end, it didn't really work out. Anyway, we're ahead of the Williams cars for the race. I'd love to try and stick with the midfield in the race if we can. The time has come for these drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel. Race day has arrived. Aston Martin did a good job during qualifying and they're pretty much where everyone expected them to be on the grid. Now it's up to them to defy expectations during the race itself. McLaren did well during qualifying. They maximized their potential and are in a good position for the race today. And the sun is shining bright here today. This is perfect weather for teams and drivers alike to show us what they're capable of. Exciting choices lie ahead then for the teams and their drivers here in Melbourne. So let's see what happens. Right, we're going to set the strategies for the race. So, we don't really have any softs available. Uh, just one fresh set, one fresh of each. I think we're going to go balanced and we're going to go for... Actually, no, I'm going to go for the soft tire. Why not? Let's commit. Let's try something. Lance has been quicker this weekend, I think, on average. I mean, it's been close. Seb did pull it back at the end, but I I'm feeling positive with Lance Stroll this weekend. So with Seb, we'll put him on a medium. Um, we'll keep the fuel the same. As for Lance, then we'll get him on a soft to start with. I think that could be the, the key shout here. So strategy-wise, uh, we'll do a one-stop with Seb. Medium to hard. We'll go nice and long. And make that work. As for Lance, we will go soft. We're going to have to make our own strategy up here. It's going to take a lot of tire saving at times, but let's gamble. Let's try something different with it, you know, with Lance. Let's try and send it and see what happens. It's a very risky strategy. I don't know if we're going to make it on tires. It could go wrong. The beauty of Lance is I think if we get a VSC or a safety car, it'll bring him into the race. So. Let's see, let's try different things and we'll see how it works out. We're ready for the race though. It's bright and sunny as the drivers line up on the grid. And there's Sebastian Vettel. They'll be starting the race from the bottom half of the grid, so there's a fair bit of ground to make up. There's Lance Stroll, down the grid. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. And we're just moments away now. Get ready for the Australian Grand Prix. Right, let's do this. Lights are on. It's lights out, and away we go. Right, straight in the way then. Let's look at Lance. He's going to get a decent start. Seb as well. Let's see if we can make some progress early on. Easy, easy. Come on, fellas. Stroll losing out to a Williams. Stay cool, man. You've done a good job. We'll put straw on maximum attack early on. Come on. Okay. To try and push past a few cars. Use energy. Okay. Come on, Lance, mate. We'll put Seb on aggressive once Lance goes by. We want to make sure... Good job. Lance goes ahead first. Here we go. Don't fight to you, mate. Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. There we go. Lovely. Hold back cars behind for Seb. We can now put him on aggressive. We can move Lance down to neutral now. And we'll put him on aggressive for now. Let's see how they all push. Copy. 
Yeah, take it easy. Yeah. So Lance is the only person on the soft tyre going for this strategy. It's going to be risky, but we've got to take risks sometimes. Do everything you can, mate. Yep. Let's go. Let's try and get past a few cars. Energy if you need it. Yeah. And then worst ways, if he does get past one or two, you can then try and save position if necessary. We're going to put Seb to push a little bit here. See if we can respond a little bit. We don't want Seb to drop too far back. We want to try and keep both cars in the race for as long as possible. As DRS will now get enabled. DRS will be active. Yep. So we just need to push now. The cars are happy to push. Yeah. Important phase here. I want to try and keep Seb close and not fall back too much. Lance getting pretty close here to the Alpha Tower. He might actually look for a move, maybe. Maybe. The weather's all over the place. Overcast conditions here this race. Last, not quite able to get by. We'll go for neutral and we'll just turn down the push a little bit to take it easy. As for Seb, we'll go neutral and go aggressive. Let's see how Seb's getting on actually. So, tyre wear for Seb, 91%. Albon has overtaken him, which isn't ideal. And there's an overtake from Williams. Let's watch it. We can take a look now. Now we see the Williams here. Easy move down the pitch straight, DRS wide open, Albon goes through, and job done. And they clear it, big move for them, and a race position gained. Not ideal for us. That's going to be a big blow to the team, will they be able to recover? We'll see. We will try, we will try. So, Seb's going to do his thing. We're not a million miles away from the pack. With Lance, it's just Seb falling off. I kind of wish I'd start with a soft tire on Seb now, but we'll see. The soft is holding up okay with Lance so far. It's not looking too shabby. Not a lot in it between the medium and the hard in terms of tire wear. We could always put Lance on a hard tire if we have to, if he's still in the race. So that's okay. But yeah, Seb's dropping back, man. Pace ain't there. Look at that. Let's see if he's going to go by. Not ideal. Feels like ever since Seb got taken out, he's been on the back foot with Pace this weekend. Lance, though, having a stellar weekend. Just gained by Williams. As you can see, he's still hanging in there with that soft tire, which is great. So, very happy to see that from Lance Stroll. We'll try and harvest some energy here. Okay, Stroll starting to drop back now from the cars ahead. Meanwhile, Seb, looking pretty comfortable, fighting back here. We're going to bump them both up in battery. Copy. So, that should improve their pace a little bit. They're both on standard right now. Important that we try to go long with Lance Stroll here in terms of strategy. Pit window in six laps time, so we're looking at lap 13 for Lance. So we've got to try and stretch these tyres out. At the minute, you can see here he's just kind of in no man's land. He's dropped away from the pack by quite a, quite a margin, to be fair. But still got a healthy gap over the Williams. Ooh! Whoa! I think the Williams cars took themselves out. Multiple cars crashed. We could see a safety car from this. Latifi gets a penalty. Who's that that just crashed? Let's take a look at the replay. Now let's William look. Civil We're War. Watching Nicholas Latifi. Let's see. Latifi behind Albon. Albon moves across. Latifi locks up. You can clearly oh. see the contact there. And that caused a lot of damage. Big, 
big moment, big incident. Are they still both for going? Yes, they are. Latifi into the pits, as you can see, to try and repair the front wing. Well, that takes the pressure off from us now. We're not really racing the Williams anymore now, thanks to that, which is good. Um, elsewhere, we've got Stroll in push mode here, trying to make up some progress. But yeah, we're looking at Seb now on his own. Hopefully, he can make some progress, really. Um, try to get stuck in a little bit. How look for tyres compared to everyone else? Let's have a look. Tire wear, 75 for Seb, 76, 75. Okay, we've kind of pulled it back a little bit with the mediums on Seb, so we can go ahead and push on a bit. Let's try and make some progress. Yellow flag, sector three. Seems to have been a lock up. Let's have a look at this. Let's take a closer look. Lando. Watch this. We're looking at Lando Norris. Ooh. That lock up could have cost them dearly. Could have been worse than that. Could have been straight to the barrier. Luckily, he kept it out. So there's Lance through the final corner. Still going to stay out for a little bit longer here. And there's Seb. Starting to make progress now. Tire wear looking good ahead of schedule. Lance as well, to be fair, looking okay for tire wear. It's better than expected. So that's a positive. Both chipping away with their batteries. I'm not happy with the grip. Copy that. How many laps am I going to get on these? That's about it. Lap 15 now, we can bring you in, mate. As you can see, 28% on the left side of the tyres. We will bring Lance in, so let's prepare the stop. So, we could just go for a hard tyre, to be fair. And go long and save a medium in case there's a safety car. That could be a shout. As soon as we don't really have any soft to run. Um... Let's go for a hard tire. Well, let's just go flat out on the hard tire. It's okay. We'll go for the hard tire. We'll overwrite. It's okay. It's all good. Right. Lots of cars are in now. I've got both drivers pushing flat out. Everything they've got. Here comes Lance. Let's see what the pit stop looks like. As now we're going to see Seb drive by, as you can see. Cracking on with his race. Here goes Lance into his pit box. So the plan here, I might still commit to the two-stop of Lance, but I'm going to have a hard task stint, but we're just going to push flat out and just see what kind of pace he has, really, um, and try our best. So, Lance done. 2.8, back on the way. Let's get out there, let's keep on. Let's keep pushing. Yellow flag, sector three. Yellow flag. Bottas, lock up. Probably the same as Lando's, to be fair. That's going to drop him back a little bit. We're close to pitting with Seb. We're going to try and stretch out one more lap and then put him on the hard tyre to the end. Right, Seb coming in. Let's watch it live. Here we go. Into the pits. And now we're going to see Lance drive by here as well. We've got him just driving flat out at this point. Not much more we can really do. Uh, Seb gets served and is back on his way to rejoining. And there is Lance just up ahead. Stroll last lap 25.8. Hmm. Feels like we're about a second off. Bottas 24.6. Sonoda 6 tenths faster. Joe 8 tenths faster. Schumacher 1.1 faster. We're lacking about a second to the midfield right now. We're a long way away. Perez 22.9 last lap, by the way. Absolutely insane pace. We're on course to get lapped at this rate. I can see the lead is visibly approaching. I'd like to not get lapped, but I think we are. At the same time, we're catching Latifi. We might lap him again. But yeah, Perez is on his way to lap us soon, which is not ideal. Although some cars in for a second stop. By the looks of it, Ricardo, the Magnussen, they were in. Seb slowly catching Stroll, who of course now is uh, struggling on tyres. Although we're still above target. I am going to put Lance on aggressive now to try and make it on the tyres. Uh, we'll send a message to not fight teammate. And we'll see how that goes. Vettel about to get lapped. Here we go. There it is. So now Stroll. Easy as that. Science pits there for a second time. We might see more leaders pit. There might be a, a second stop in this. Hamilton in for a second time as well. Quite a few cars two stopping. Alright, let's slow it down. Lap 42. Seb is now ahead of Stroll, by the way. So, yeah, as expected. We will take it easy with Seb's tyres a little bit less. Drop back a bit. Been pushing pretty hard, so to be expected. 
I think we'll make it fine with Seb. Lance, we've got to try and stretch it. Um, and then we might, we might go for that soft tire glory run to go for that fastest lap, which of course I want to try and achieve. But we're going to wait until the track conditions are at their best at the end of the race. Albon in the pits here for a second stop. So that might not put my lap down, but close to a lap down to us. It's going to drop him behind Latifi as well. There you go. So we're nearly lapping the Williams again, which is good. Our race pace is better, but we're still a long way away from the midfield, which isn't good. The battle out front though is fierce, man. Leclerc, Verstappen still going at it, which is insane. To be fair, Stroll's keeping up with Seb now. Got a few impressive performances up there, but Verstappen really putting the pressure on now. And look at that, Verstappen's through for the lead of the race. So he's got Leclerc. Max seems to have more pace. Leclerc might be in saving mode right now. Either way, we're 41 seconds off the next car, which is Sonoda. Says a lot, doesn't it? Okay. Yep, I can see Copy. that, Lance. We will go light for now and conserve. Just try and recharge a little bit and get ready for the push. You can see there again, both left side of tyres. We'll get him ready. Seb, we're just going to go flat out to the end now and give it everything. I locked up there trying to keep it steady. Yellow flag. Seb's gone off. Made a mistake. At the new turn 14, I believe it is. I think there's been a lock up. Let's have turn a look. 13. So Let's have a look. This was the Aston Martin. Oh. It's a lock up, and that could be costly. That's a big lock up from Seb there. Had to park it in the grass as well, waiting for traffic to clear. And that was a bitter blow for the team. And it yep. may have really hurt their overall chances. I think that sums it up, to be fair. Right, we're going to get Lance ready for the stop. So we're going to get them soft tyres ready. Fresher set available, 86%, 88. There we go, we'll go for those. We'll see if it works. Box this lap. We're going to not leave it to chance. Box, box. In regards to safety cars and stuff, so... Let's see. We could also go for a glory run with Seb, to be fair. Might as well go with both cars and see if we can snatch it. Right? What's the gap to Williams? 44 seconds. Let's go for it. We're a minute off Snowda. Let's go for it. We're going to go saving mode for both drivers. Now, I just realised we don't have um, a fresh set of soft uh, stroll, of course. We know he's going to use a new set. As for Seb, though, he does have a fresh set, so we're going to try and really go for it with Seb. In the meantime, though, Lance is going to pick this lap because I'm worried about his tyres having an issue, so I'd rather play it safe and not have his tyres pop. So Lance into the pit lane. Let's see him get this stop done. Hopefully nice and safe. Into the pit box we go. On the jack. Nice and slick and back on the way. Okay, so Seb, we're going to bring him in. Let's speed it up. I think we have Williams in the pit lane as well. That's Latifi. So, possible glory run for Williams. What's the best lap? Last lap. Doesn't really say, but anyway. In the 22s and 23s for these guys. Right, we're going to set Stroll up for push. We can push a bit more. Yeah, okay. We will go for deploy and keep it on the battery over the lap. Overtake. Yeah. And then we'll do that for Seb. If you need it on the next lap. Okay. Let's speed this up a little bit and then we'll set Seb up for the lap. What about sector times we're looking at here for Lance? Personal best first sector. Not purple, but personal best. Get the tyres down now. Yep. Tyres moderately overheating. We're going to commit anyway. Want to try and set a PB. Second sector from Lance Stroll. Purple, or personal best, sorry. In the meantime, let's set Seb up for the lap. He's going to get lapped, actually, so I don't really want this. Um, hmm. Let's get him on full push now, straight away. Waste no time. Push the tyres. Hard now, push the tyres. Please don't let yourself get a lap, Seb. Just go, mate. Use oh, he's getting lapped. Never mind. Never mind, we'll wait for the next lap. We'll abandon ship. 
As for Lance though, here we go, let's see. Across the line, 22-9. It's not purple, Verstappen, you can see there, 22-1-8. Four more laps to go, four more laps. Perez with a fast lap right now, but doesn't say what it is. Right, this is it, Leclerc on the last lap of the race. We're gonna get Stroll to just pull back a little bit as he's right at the back of Seb here. This is Seb's chance, let's see if he can get close to the fastest lap. Not feeling confident, but anyway, we'll see what happens. Come on, come on, let's go. Verstappen and Leclerc just up the road, so uh, this is the last lap and the last attempt. We'll actually put Stroll on for engine saving mode. Can Seb do anything about it? Two purple sectors, no two personal best sectors. I was hoping to maybe see a purple there, but we're clearly just not fast enough. Through the final corner we go. Leclerc wins, Verstappen second. The gap was two tenths in the end. And there we have it. Another disappointing Sebastian race. With a comfortable result for his team here. I can't lie, I felt like my team was a struggle, but Aston this is Martin had a good enough weekend, but there's still some margin for improvement here. Yeah, Definitely. plenty for them to think about and strategize. And certainly a good enough result for now. With the race wrapped up, the team is ranked in ninth in the constructor standings. Now the Feels team like will be looking man. ahead to Imola, where the season progresses with the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Get ready for some fierce competition. So Ferrari make it three out of three. Sainz won the first two races. Leclerc wins here today in Australia, just like in real life. Verstappen second. Sainz finishes P3 and Checo P4 with a fastest lap of a 121.557. We in the end finish in P17 and P18. The fastest lap attempt wasn't that great from Seb. 23.5. Lance was 6 tenths quicker. And I think highlights the weekend. Lance had a bit more raw pace. But I think race pace, Lance kind of dropped off. I did try a different strategy to be fair. And it didn't really work out. But we had to try something different. Just to try and see if we could you know, get ourselves into the race. But yeah. Job done. Not ideal. It is what it is. On to the next one. As we look at the drivers championship. Science still leads the way. Decent cushion to be fair, 16 points over Verstappen. Leclerc with that win, only P4, still a long way away. And then for us, we're sitting in the classic P17, P18 of course, and P9 in the Constructors. So yeah, only Aston Martin Williams had to score a point, has scored a point, and so have McLaren. So yeah, work to do. Now then, decent weekend, we got 100 out of 100 in practice, which is good. So uh, decent experience there. Qualifying, of course, hampered by Q1, we're not going to get 100 out of that if we're getting knocked down Q1. Um, but yeah, still, decent stuff. Race-wise, very similar. And then growth potential, of course, taking up to the final values in terms of XP. So yeah, as you can see, because of the guarantees, we lost out 77,000 out of our pocket. Not ideal, but still, it's all good. Now then, today we have the new regulations and we have an email which requires a response, which is, I believe, what that is. So let's take care of it. First of all, though, just a brief uh, you know, overview. We've noticed braking performance of Lance Stroll could be improved. Medium speed cornering of car one could be better. So that's on Seb's car and Lance is braking. So same as always. We'll have a look at the braking, to be fair, in a moment. Summary of the race. Uh, the board watched the race and are disappointed with the team, but performed below expectation. Fair enough. Uh, race summary. And then here we go. So... A regulation vote minor technical changes as you know we may change the regulations that define Formula 1's rules between seasons to make the sport fairer for competitors and more engaging for fans with the goals in mind we're proposing a new minor technical regulation for the 2023 season these proposed regs changes will impact many areas of car aero with focus on reducing overall downforce generated and maximum cornering speed fair enough let's see Minor technical regulation changes will reduce all teams' design expertise regarding the affected car parts. This will impact all teams, regardless of their car strengths or weaknesses. So, please give consideration to the fairness and the future of Formula 1 as a whole. So, do we go for the high speed or the low speed? Let's have a little thing. So, we know about our car, of course, and the weaknesses we have. We're good in low speed, we're pretty poor in high speed and medium speed. So, with that in mind, the goal is to reduce the overall downforce generated and the maximum cornering speed. So I guess we'll go for the low speed. We've got to try and go to our strengths, right? So let's go for it. Even though we're building to improve for this season with the high speed, 
the lowest speed is still our strength. So we'll consider this at the halfway stage of the season in terms of development, and we might try and strengthen that up soon. But there we go. That's our response. We'll see what the other teams vote. For now, though, as you can see, job done for this one. Uh, we're going to do a bit more housekeeping. Okay, we'll have to look at a chassis and a suspension, to be fair, just to be safe. Uh, we'll, we'll have a look in a minute. For now, though, let's have a look at this. Low stock suspension. Both of them. That's for Seb as well. Okay, so both cars are low on suspension. Fair enough. Um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But here we go. This is the key thing. The front wing has arrived. And that is massive. As you can see, front wing design complete. Now, I was going to make an upgrade, you know, to try and improve the braking. But I've seen on the calendar here. Here we are, Sunday, April 17th. And tomorrow, the regulations vote result comes out. So, very important. And also, the research period begins. So, instead of investing in upgrades right now let's see let's see what happens in 24 hours because that's going to be massive oh let's stop it stop it right let's have a look then inbox here we go car park research unlocked now that the technical regulation voting is pos is complete we know what our parameters are for car development for next year with that in mind we should start research for next season as soon as possible uh, doing research for next season will give our team an expertise boost and will help with any expertise loss from the new regulations. This will be how we put ahead of the pack next year. But I will leave that research up to you. Here's the vote. So, thank you to all teams for voting on the proposed minor technical regulation changes. The majority have voted in favour of the below options. So these changes will be included as part of next season. You can see the full breakdown of team responses to the past regulation changes attached. So let's have a look. Changes passed and how the teams voted on this change. So, front wing, high speed, down 10%. Medium speed, down 20%. Low speed, down 30%. Rear wing, same values apply. Underfloor, same values. And suspension, same values. We voted for this. Ferrari, Red Bull, Alpha Terry voted against. So, to be fair, I feel like I might have misunderstood this a little bit. I should have voted for the high speed, shouldn't I? I've just realised I've messed this up. Oh god, I completely misunderstood the email. I'm such an idiot. We voted to take away our strength. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Even still, had we voted for it, it would have passed because of the majority vote, so we would have missed out anyway, but that is really annoying. Really annoying. Still, it wouldn't matter anyway because had we gone for the vote, it would have been 6-4, so it wouldn't have happened. Okay, uh, final email is going to be a preview of the next race in Imola. So what we're going to do, we've got 21 million to spend. Let's look at upgrades because we've got to try and work on these cars. So in the warehouse, of course, we have the new front wing. As you can see here, the AM22 FW2 is finished design. You can see the improvements, but we need to manufacture. So let's get some ready. We'll go for three front wings, one for each driver and a spare. Let's rush. Let's rush it. Let's rush it. I should have done this the second we got the upgrade, but I was too focused on next season's regulations that I didn't really realise. It goes to show every day is crucial, man. If you get one day wrong or you don't make the most of it, you're in trouble. Anyway, car part development. We're going to start a new project and we're going to look to improve the car. Of course, we have to research for next season. We're not going to do this until we get new staff, as we're still scouting them, of course. So, a bit of patience on that front. For now, though, let's work on some more upgrades. Now, one thing I want to work on is suspension. I think that's going to be key for us. We're low on suspension parts anyway, so we may as well bring a new one in rather than make spares. So, we're investing heavily in this. First of all, 1.5 hours in the CFD. We're going big with this one, I think. This could be a key upgrade if you combine this with the next upgrade we have on the way. This could really help us out. Wind tunnel, 15 hours as well. Pretty big investment. We're going to bump it up to 17 so it rounds off there. As you can see, drag reduction is going to improve. 
medium speed as well, and also airflow. But now let's design the part. And I want to go for race performance preset. It does hamper the brake cooling quite badly. So uh, we're going to just bring it up a little bit by two clicks. And then what we'll do is we'll improve high speed by two, medium speed by one. We're going to go for it. Brake cooling takes a hit, but the rest of it really improves. Uh, top speed, acceleration, low speed, medium speed, high speed not so much, but still improves. Top speed as well. Let's go, let's let's go rush. We're, we're gonna invest, you know, we're, we're here to invest money and spend big. Right, let's go. So with that done, we have of course the underfloor upgrade, which we're gonna get the that's the second upgrade we've got. So underfloor and suspension arriving, that's big, of course, with these cars. And the front wing in two days, we should get the next car part. The issue is, I think we haven't left ourselves enough time as the next race starts Friday. So, unless we can run the upgrade on Saturday, we're going to wait for the next race for the front wing to arrive. Here we go though. Team hub facility has been improved and fully refurbished. Good to see. That's good for the team. As you can see here, it's going to improve the experience gain quite a lot. Monthly upkeep does go up quite a fair bit. However, the level goes up by one and also the team attractiveness goes up quite a bit as well. So that's good to know. Here's the race prep for the weekend. So clear skies, uh, race forecast that is. Let's see, this track should be better for us. Um, low speed corners, you know, got the Tosa hairpin. Aquaminerale, the Chicane, Ravatsas. It could be a stronger weekend for us, definitely. There we go. The board are still satisfied. Confidence is on medium, so nothing has changed. And we'll see what happens. You can see in the bottom there, the long-term objective is to score points in 50% of the races in 2024. So this is going to be a bit of a grind, and I think of a long, you know, a long way to go. Either way, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, you like and subscribe for more, as I'm going to be, you know, putting out this content quite frequently on the channel. And let me know how you guys are getting on as well with your saves. Either way, as always, a massive plug to the members for supporting the content. Finally, check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. And let's come out from me.